Okay. So, welcome. In about two minutes, I think we'll be ready. So, I thought I'd just start the introduction. So, my name's Chris James. I'm President and COO of Scaled Agile, which is a provider of SAFE. I'm going to take you through a little bit of an introduction to SAFE. And I have a colleague here. Good afternoon. That one? My name is Sridhar. Uh, I'm an engineering program manager in a company called Microfocus. I don't know how many of you heard <laughs> give an introduction about that. Okay. Yeah. I, I mentioned uh, Sridhar now because he may help with some of the technical difficulties we've got. But, um, it is working, there you go. Uh, two. So uh, we're going to also do, uh, Sharad is uh, local, lives in Bangalore, and he, he's been using SAFE for the past 18 months. And so he's going to, about halfway through, he's going to come up and do a case study and share that with you. So thank you for that. I think we're ready to go. So I was going to mention, too, that in your bag insert, uh, there is a, a white paper, and a lot of the concepts and details I'm going to go through are covered in, in a great more detail in this uh, white paper. And that's in your bag insert. But thanks for coming, I really appreciate it. And sorry, there was a slight delay there. I couldn't look after I saw uh, defragment this come up, and I thought, oh no, that doesn't look good. Anyway, it's great to be here in uh, in India. The last time I was here, I was uh, with another company, Oracle, and I was lucky enough to watch uh, India play Ireland. And that was quite exciting because for the first three overs, it looked like Ireland might win. Mm -hmm. But um, that was just the first three overs, and it was done. So we've introduced uh, Sarada, uh, and he'll be up shortly. I just want to thank the Agile India team, uh, they've done a super job providing a big tent for us to, to come and share different uh, approaches to Agile and uh, uh, in a healthy and, and good environment. So thank you for that. And I love the sort of uh, rapid badge response team there. You didn't have to wait a minute to get your badge. I don't know if you noticed that, but they're very good at that. So these are the topics I'm going to cover, uh, a little bit about uh, what's happening in the industry, share that with you. Uh, I, I deal a lot with the analysts and I'll just share a couple of slides and just explain what's going on. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, the fundamentals and values and principles and lean concepts which are at the heart of SAFE. Uh, talk a little bit about it, what we call essential SAFE which is the minimum elements necessary uh, to be successful at SAFE. And when people say we're doing SAFE, uh, I always like to check, and we check, to see if they're doing these 10 elements, so I'll share those with you. And then, as I said, we've got uh, a, a case study from Microsoft, uh, Microfocus, uh, and, uh, which is quite a big company. They, they acquired or merged with uh, Hewlett Packard's software uh, uh, part of the business, and so it's, it's quite an extensive set of software that they're using safe to develop. Okay, so a little bit about me. I've been in uh, IT for about 30 years, and in one of the presentations they talked about the firms uh, that had gone out of business through merger and other things, and uh, virtually every IT company I've ever worked with has gone out of business. Now that's no reflection on me, actually, just to be clear. Uh, but I was at DEC, and uh, DEC uh, was a great company, great culture, but didn't survive the transition from workstations uh, to, to PC. So famously, uh, Ken Olson, who's a leader of, of, of DEC, uh, said, who, who wants a computer on their desk? And uh, just about everyone did, and uh, the company didn't believe it. So DEC is no more, though it was a great company. And then I was at some microsystems, uh, it struggled to do that transition from, soft, uh, from hardware to software uh, and ended up inside uh, Oracle. And uh, actually, that whole uh, IP that was Sun Microsystems is the basis for Oracle's cloud systems, Solaris and the hardware, etc. Uh, I worked at Rally, 
which no longer exists. Those of you who know Rally, that actually went into CA uh, by acquisition, but uh, went through the IP process uh, on the New York Stock Exchange, went up there and supported uh, Tim and Ryan to ring the bell. It was uh, a, a great day, but uh, that company is also gone. So there's a lot of change, and uh, business leaders need business agility. So let's have a look at what's happening in the industry. So I'm, this is a bragging slide, so I for, forgive me for one bragging slide, but the, the most uh, widely adopted scaling method, and we are talking about scaling, is, uh, is safe, and it's, uh, it, you know, all the surveys, I could have put three or four surveys up from different companies. This one is um, from version one. They do a, an annual survey. And uh, safe is their number one, but number two is actually uh, Scrum of Scrums, and uh, that is part of uh, one of the practices of of uh, safe as well. And the third one is companies building their own. They developed a particular approach to agile and uh, a, a other additional practices, and they've uh, built their own. And we we don't recommend it. Uh, because in, in many cases they're reinventing the wheel. Uh, they are they don't have a pool of people, a pool of partners that they can draw on because they have this specific way uh, of doing uh, their approach to agile framework. So anyway, those are the top three. Uh, I'd like to put this one up. We talk about waterfall, and this is a Gartner survey, uh, and it. The, the key premise, they, you know, Ronald Gardner works for the primarily with a lot of, with, with the conservative late adopter community is what I would say, and they say. Uh, and so what, when they survey, they still have a lot of waterfall activity. But they're saying right now that that uh, waterfall activity is going down about 4% a year. And uh, you can see there that it's still at 41% in this 2017 uh, survey. And we'll see, we'll, clearly we're going to see uh, waterfall gradually go down and down. And they're, you know, current pastures through the Gartner survey is about 4% a year. So they say we're at a tipping point here uh, with agile adoption. This is another one from Gartner, and they're talking about the three ways of enterprise, the three waves of enterprise agility. Um, how many people were here? With, or we're working when uh, we were thinking about Lean, Six Sigma, and using that in the manufacturing. Anyone? Yeah. I was at DEC at the time, and uh, we were using that significantly, and uh, actually part of it when I was at Sun Microsystems as well, we, it started to come into the business side, into the services side uh, from the manufacturing. And then in 2001, obviously, it was the Agile Manifesto, uh, still important uh, guidance for us. Uh, but now, in this, in this phase, we're at what we're calling CEO-led enterprise agility. And the demand is for agility at the CEO right across the organization, not the CTO, CIO, but also right across uh, the organization. And uh, we, we talk about it being a strategic uh, imperative uh, or a strategic competency now to have agility as part of your DNA. So how does all that map to digital transformation? Well, digital disruption is affecting every industry across the globe. I like to talk about it is everyone is having their Uber moment. You know, when Uber disrupted the taxi business, well, that type of disruption is happening virtually in every industry. Someone mentioned today uh, or yesterday in one of the sessions about the keyboard disappearing when Apple disappeared the keyboard. You know, we were all used to having a keyboard and then Apple disappeared that and it became part of the, the phone and integrated into the phone. We even have uh, reusable rockets now. And so that, that's disrupting. But every, every company has their Uber moment. And uh, it's not just once. Now, Uber itself is having an Uber moment where they have driverless cars is on the horizon. 
And so their model is going to have to change. So every, every company uh, is facing this Uber issue. And, uh, and it's not just going to happen once. It's going to keep happening. And that's why innovation is at the heart of survival, or the heart of uh, strategy. And you put the two together, having uh, business agility, organization agility, uh, and being able to react to these uh, disruptions, it's hugely important that we help companies develop that uh, strategic uh, DNA. This is Dean Leffingwell, and he talks about uh, business imperative around this. Uh, and every business is a software business right now. And so you're in a good industry, those of you who are developers. How many developers do we have in the room? Yeah, a few? OK. Well, you're in a great industry because the software is eating the world. And I think we're all also, as they say, drowning in data. But uh, I think we are, we have to get this right. And uh, I'm glad that SAFE is playing an important part in that. So. It's very difficult, though. How do we com uh, compete when our retrospectives look like this? Do these make a lot of sense to you? Do you see this? You know, too little visibility in what's being built, uh, underestimated dependencies, uh, poor morale in the teams because they're not meeting their targets. Do you see this type of thing in your organization? Anyone see one that's missing? Any, anything missing that they've? Would have put up in their retrospective. No. Well, I, one, you know, it's it's keeping the energy in there. You know, there's a lot of, you know, poor morale is often because there's just too much work, and it's very difficult to keep the energy going uh, with with the amount of work that's going. But this is our challenge, and this is why Safe was born, really. So, what is Safe? Uh, besides being the leading framework for it, it's freely available. Uh, you can go to uh, scaledagileframework.com uh, and there's masses of data. In, in book form, it's about 600 pages. That's freely available guidance uh, and advice around principles and practices around Lean Agile and DevOps. Uh, that's the big picture, but it is configurable uh, and therefore scalable for teams, programs, and portfolios. And it's supported, although we make it freely available, it's supported by a role-based curriculum. Uh, we believe it's important not just to raise awareness that you, know, you should be doing this, but also help to train people as a start and, a, a, and as an approach uh, to moving forward. And that's very important. It's, I think we've had enough advice about, yeah, we need to do this, but how? What are the practical steps? What are the proven steps uh, that we can take to do this? And that's what, that is essentially what SAFE is. It's a set of proven uh, practices and principles, training material that actually helps you get started, helps you establish the rules uh, to implement uh, Agile at scale. So, how does it support developing organizations' agility to support uh, digital transformation? Well, we run the company uh, on, on SAFE, and it's never been easier for me as a business leader, business owner uh, role, to align strategy and execution. And I'll show you some of the ways that we're doing that. But aligning strategy and ex execution is key. You know, When I was at some microsystem, it wasn't that we didn't know that we had to move from being a hardware company primarily to being a software company. It, it wasn't that we didn't know how to develop good software. We had some great software, Java, Solaris. But we didn't necessarily have the all, whole organization or, or a, big, a big percentage of the, uh, of the organization attached to that strategy and executing to it. And so when you get a, 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 a a way of doing that, it, it's a big, a big plus. Now, SAFE is built around agile teams. That's a key component of it. Uh, and lean agile leadership and lean agile mindset are, are, are critical. And, uh, those are the most difficult areas. And uh, I think we should be forgiving of leaders who are not 
quite there yet. They know they have to get there, but it takes about 10,000 hours of practice to really start to understand lean agile leadership and lean agile uh, mindset, particularly if you being used to working in that waterfall context. It takes practice. And one of the other key things around SAFE is relentless improvement. You have to have that mindset of continuous improvement. And it frees you up from thinking, you know, oh my gosh, we found this broken thing. Uh, if you have that mindset of, of course there's going to be things that don't work as, as they're supposed to, of course things are going to break, but with a mindset of relentless uh, improvement, it really frees, frees you up. So, let's talk a little bit about embracing a lean, uh, agile mindset. Obviously, we have two areas that we're covering in this slide. One is about value, which is core to, to lean, delivering value uh, with the shortest sustainable uh, uh, lead time. And uh, it's, it underpins these key things respect for people and culture. It's all about people and it's all about the way people work. So that's a key one. Flow, flowing value, continuing you through your systems. Uh, innovation, which is at the heart of survival, uh, you know, to face those uber moments. And then, you know, relentless improvement is key. With lean, agile uh, uh, leadership as part of that. And the Agile Manifesto, even though it's 17 years old, is still a key component. It, it recognizes that individuals and their act, interactions and talking and working together is critical. Uh, you know, working software over comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration, putting customer first. Uh, But Agile Manifesto is it, still something that's key to our, uh, our training and uh, our mindset. And responding to change, you know, expecting change and responding to it appropriately is, is critical. So these are the Lean Agile values that are part of SAFE. And we also have uh, additional principles, because there weren't enough, just the, the Lean and the Agile Manifesto. So we have these nine, and they're documented in the, in the white paper I've given you, but so I won't go through all of them in any detail, but the nine are, take an economic view, that at, at some level, you have, it has to make business sense, applying systems thinking, there's, it's, you know, just about everything is a system, there are inputs and there are outputs, and you have to think about the systems. Uh, Assuming variability, preserve options, and that's one of the ones that when I, when we hire people who have not worked in this environment, that's one of the biggest challenges. They don't like this change in the variability. They like to understand exactly what's needed and then deliver it. And uh, this change in mindset around assuming things are going to change and preserving your options is very important. As is building inc incrementally with fast integrated learning cycles. It's very much, we've been talking here in a, in a few sessions about uh, fail fast, but it, it's really about learning cycles and learning fast. And uh, uh, us, in our, I'm going to say our generation, although probably I'm older than most of you, but you know, learning a living has to be a part of how we uh, operate. And uh, learning a living and having learning cycles, even even though some of those things are going to fail, is hugely important to innovation and uh, sustainability. Milestones on objective evaluation of working systems. It's the only way really to, 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 to have milestones, is to see uh, working systems. And that's why we have, as part of SAFE, a two-week demo every two weeks. And that is key to understanding if our milestones are appropriate once you see a working system. Uh, visualize and limit WIP. The visualization is, is key. In, in any agile and particularly safe environment, you're going to see a lot of visualization. In our, our company, we have a wall as big as that, which has everything from our business objectives and our 
our, our whip and our backlog all visualized. And uh, the key thing is looking at where we've got too much whip going on. And that's, a, that's one of the big challenges, because people have this habit of starting a lot of things. And we talk about you know stop starting, start finishing, and uh, make sure that you have you know, to speed up, you have to reduce the width. That's a key principle. And apply cadence and synchronization. Synchronization across teams, as you know very well. And we'll talk a little bit about cross domain planning shortly. Uh, the motivation, purpose, and engagement of teams is critical. And working on that continually and supporting that uh, through different uh, approaches, particularly de decentralized decision making. As a leader, it took me a while to understand it. I was distracted by servant leadership, and I'm not a keen, I don't really like that term. I think it's more about shared leadership. At any point in time, we were working together, and we were in an agile release train. We would be sharing leadership decisions at various points. And as a leader, it's really important to get comfortable. Uh, or understand why you're uncomfortable uh, when you're sharing leadership. Because at any one point in time, you know, people are, are, have to take the lead because they know more about the work. And so you have to be comfortable with that. So Agile Teams, it's all about Agile Teams. They're at the heart of uh, safe, uh, cross-functional, self-organizing, doing everything from divine, uh, define, build, test, uh, and, and deliver value. Uh, the cross-functional and the self-organizing around, you know, a, a key plan, do, uh, adjust, check is, is just a critical fundamental part, and nothing beats a team that's doing that. Applying good agile software engineering practices around XP, Scrum, and Kanban, and uh, save embraces those and they're a key cornerstone uh, of safe. And then delivering value every two weeks. You'll see, I'm going to play a, a, a quick video here and you'll see that they talk about three weeks. Our recommendation is two weeks, we can deliver value in two weeks and it takes a while to get used to that cadence but once you're in it, it becomes natural. Now, I said nothing beats an agile team except a team of agile teams. Uh, in an agile release stream, taking those plan, do, adjust cycles and uh, bringing that all together. And the agile release stream is where we align 50 to 125 uh, practitioners to a common mission, bring more together, uh, apply cadence and synchronization. We're planning together, planning the iterations together over six to 12 weeks. And then uh, providing vision, roadmap, uh, and some guide architecture guidance to keep them all aligned around uh, the, the architecture. Cadence and synchronization is, is just critical. Uh, you know, when you build that agile uh, release train, you're really bringing people from all of these siloed areas, the business area, the side of things, uh, the customer side, uh, the product management, uh, the architects, the hardware, software, tech, uh, testing and, and, and deployment and bringing them all together so they form a virtual uh, and organized agile uh, release train. It's a critical part of it. and I, It's always amazing to me. I sometimes hear people say, yeah, we're doing safe, but we're not doing, we haven't launched an R. You know, this is a critical component of, of safe that you bring people together into uh, and align people around an agile release train. So, Oh, I'm going to show this video in a minute, but what it does at its best is bring all stakeholders face to face, uh, but typically they're in multiple locations. That one there is a picture of actually there's, uh, in the big screen at the back is actually a picture of uh, people in Mumbai, this was taken in Chicago, and there was also uh, a, a London uh, group that was there. And it, this art of sort of bringing people together virtually is a new skill that, that, that coaches and uh, uh, release trains engineers are, are, are learning about the tools and techniques of how you do that and bring teams together remotely. But it's critical uh, for that uh, cadence and synchronization. 
Uh, the business owners set mission with minimum possible constraints. Uh, requirements and design emerge from the dialogue that's in the room. Uh, decisions are accelerated. Uh, that question in the previous uh, session was, uh, how, you know, why do we have to wait for decision making? Well, one of the things that we try and do when we're running an art is have the people in there that can make those decisions so that you know, if you need decision on licenses or decision on hiring, you can get a quicker answer to those when people see that they're a dependency and if we don't get those answers, you know, things will be delayed. And teams create the plan together, that cross-functional team, they create the plans together, uh, they take responsible the responsibility for them, uh, and, you know, they identify the dependencies to make it work. We've got a, about a minute and a half of video. I just like, if you've never seen this, and it's in here somewhere. Is it here? No. I should have introduced Pranjal. Pranjal is uh, a new employee, new team member at, uh, at Skeraju. He's uh, running our partner program in this part of the world, based in Bangalore. Welcome, Pranjal. All get together. The purpose of this event is for our development teams to all get together and plan out their essentially next quarter of work. This is the first time we've brought all the teams together to plan at the same time. Being all in a room together, it, you know, creates a lot of energy for the teams. Uh, it allows people to be accessible and you know, reach over and talk to somebody else, or they see something going on in another team, and they can just walk over there and take care of it. Basically, each sheet of paper is, is a sprint or three weeks of work. And on that piece of paper, we have items that either the operators ask us for, or they've identified some issue. And so we're sticking those on there at a high level saying, hey, in the next three weeks, we need to knock this out. So our developers get to say, this is how we do things. And the business gets to say, this is what we need. So what we need, how to do it. These two days that are set apart have uh, given us the opportunity to completely focus on finding out our sprints and uh, getting a little bit more detail than we would otherwise because of our other jobs. So this, this has been really helpful. There's a great awareness of how much is going on other than just our team. We're seeing other development teams, we're able to all interact, share ideas. I think that's been great. This is really more about process. And we want to be able to adjust as the business changes. We want to be able to have a team that can be flexible and adjust to those changes. What we're creating here isn't just a, a one and done. We're going to do this every 12 or 14 weeks, which is really important to have that sort of cadence so the business kind of knows what's coming. They know how to get engaged. Developers know how to plan their work. And uh, so we're becoming agile. Yeah, how many people have participated in an art launch? It's, it's, it, it takes a while. I, I think, I counted up recently, I think I've had about 30 uh, PIs uh, that I've participated in. And I, it really takes some dedication. You've got to be really curious what's going on. There's 100 odd people in the room, and you, you're responsible for a piece of it. You've got to be curious about what's going on. And you've got to you know, move around the room, visit the different teams, talk about the dependencies uh, to get your plans right. And, uh, but when it's done, and when a team that's been doing it, one or two, three, four PIs, it really adds a lot of difference uh, to the flow uh, and to the, just the energy in, in the organization. So uh, I'm going to go through these, but these are the 10 essential safe elements that, that we check on. And some of the things we've already talked about, the PI planning, uh, and the system demos, and the, the principles. But I just want to talk a little bit about re relentless improvement, because again, this is critical. You have to have that mindset of uh, continuous improvement. So prior to a PI in that uh, IP sprint, we are talking about impediments. What's happening, and identifying them, and then ranking them. Uh, through the Pareto process, and then 
thinking about how we can uh, provide solutions to them, and then taking those and putting those into the backlog for the next PI and become part of the work we'll do in the next PI. But this process of inspecting the DAP is a critical part uh, of SAFE. It's continuous improvement uh, that you really have to address impediments uh, within the organization. And you really cannot uh, apply Agile at scale without addressing this and uh, incorporating the way you work. So let's talk about some results. And the last three that come up, we have a lot of case studies, and I thought it'd be great if we could do one uh, from the local team. So uh, this one is from Microfocus, and um, Srinath is going to take us through through what he's been doing at uh, Microfocus. Okay, so are you able to hear me? So my name is Sridhar. I'm trying to introduce myself uh, once again. Uh, I'm an engineering program manager in Microfocus uh, company, Bangalore, based in Bangalore. OK, so before we go, a little bit of uh, introduction about the company. Uh, Microfocus uh, is, a, is the seventh largest pure play software company in the world uh, with a global, global scale. So we, we are spread across 50 countries. Uh, basically, taking a step backwards, uh, HPE Software Division and Microfocus merged together in April 2017 uh, to form a big, seventh biggest uh, software, pure play software company in the world. Okay, and what we what we build is uh, uh, you know, enterprise grade scalable software, basically uh, solutions which are scalable and complex in nature. Okay. So this case study is from uh, one of the units in Microfocus, uh, which is known as IT Operations Management, ITOM. Uh, that unit, this particular unit has about 2,000, sorry, 1,250 employees uh, spread world over, and uh, it accounts for about $1 billion in annual revenue. So some of the adoption highlights, uh, safe adoption highlights uh, for the past uh, 18 months, so we started safe adoption uh, in uh, September 2016, uh, precisely. Uh, prior to that, uh, there were some pockets of uh, experimentation with safe, but uh, we were not doing it in a formal way. But in uh, September 2016, we took a stand as an organization, as a business unit, that start adoption of safe across the organization in a formal way. So these are some of the uh, highlights. Uh, so what we did is uh, at the beginning uh, in September 2016, uh, prior to that, we had 50 plus individual software products. And we combined these uh, 50 plus uh, software individual products into six large uh, integrated solutions, customizable integrated solutions. So that itself is a big transformation that we went through. And that using SAFE. Right. So as, as part of our adoption, uh, currently we have 10 agile release trains uh, across the, the globe. Uh, here in Bangalore, we have four agile release trains, and we are planning to start two more agile release trains, one in March, actually next week, and other one in May, uh, here in Bangalore. Okay. And as part of this exercise, uh, we have uh, so far trained 65 uh, percent of uh, our workforce in this organization, which I mentioned as ITOM, uh, all role-based trainings included. Uh, in order to train uh, our workforce, uh, we, we don't send people outside for training. We do all of our training mostly internal. So we have one SPCT, basically a safe program consultant trainer based out of Germany, and we have 16 SPCs. I, I'm an SPC as well. Uh, so we have 16 species on board uh, as of uh, today. So as part of this uh, transformation, we also established uh, a Lean Agile Center of Excellence uh, to drive this transformation across the organization uh, using a, a hub and a spoke model. Okay, so that has been very successful. I'll share more details about that uh, in, the, in the later section of the and uh, we also established communities of practice, a role-based communities of practice. Uh, we have a community of, community of practice for release train engineer, who is basically a chief scrum master for the agile release train. 
and we have communities of practice for uh, scrum masters we have communities of practice for uh, the coaches the uh, sales program consultants uh, and so on and just as uh, a figure 50% of our workforce the business units workforce is here in bangalore around uh, 800 people in one building uh, we are here and micro focus as a company uh, about 2000 people work from So this is how we have organized uh, six uh, large solutions as the you know, six large large uh, solution trains. As you can see, the top portion uh, is the portfolio layer as per se. So what I would like to point out here is that we are actually very closely structured as per the safe uh, structure, safe layers. Okay, so we have an enterprise architect, okay, uh, who drives uh, the architectural guidance and uh, the technological practices for the entire uh, business unit. And we have, uh, we are in the process of setting up uh, lean portfolio management. Uh, I would say we, we are in the journey. We, we have started, but it is not yet complete. So as I said, we have six large solution trains. As you can see, the number of agile release trains. they are diverse in nature some of them we have three and some of them we have only one uh, but you now those those the solution trains which have only one uh, we have more than what is prescribed by safe so we are going to uh, you know break them up into or structure them into multiple agile release trains uh, going forward so i would like to share what went well Uh, during our last uh, 18 months uh, journey safe adoption journey and what are the challenges and what are the learning from this so what went well we, are, we set, set up the lean agile center of excellence basically a body to drive this uh, agile transformation or safe adoption so that that was that really went well so we defined uh, the safe roadmap adoption we we defined the key performance uh, indicators and we did surveys uh, we did uh, art and lot solution assessments where we are uh, at a particular point in time so we, we do that we do those kind of surveys and assessments uh, every quarter and then uh, we have this body days was responsible for regular communication communication through emails webcast uh, you know having face to face interactions when the leaders address a uh, huge uh, number of employees so regular communication is one which went well so we, we generally got a good support from the organization from uh, the senior executives senior leadership but some pockets were moving slower okay as you know there will be a usual will in any organizational change there will be a usual adoption curve the bell curve that you, you must be aware of that and another thing that went well is adoption of uh, large solution train practices we established large solution train practices the events and the practices of the large solution train layer so that really uh, went well so we, we we piloted that in one large solution train and we are adopting that in other large solution trains so here what are the challenges and how did we overcome them so the challenges are in the uh, black colored font and the learning is in the green colored font uh, so as i said hp software and uh, micro focus uh, merge happened in april uh, 2006 2017 a uh, lot of portfolio uh, consolidation is happening so products moving uh, into one large solution uh, from one to another other one or the products uh, coming into portfolio from other organizations so this is a constant thing which we are seeing in our organization so what this calls is we have to do value stream workshops we have to reevaluate our reassess our value streams so for that uh, we had a very good framework from safe uh, what is known as value stream workshop toolkit so we use that uh, use a two day workshop to uh, identify the newer value stream and structure our uh, agile release trains appropriately so that really went well so that's a learning for us and we had deliverables from 
outside our large solution trains, which the large solution train themselves were consumed. So they, they themselves were not safe aligned, but we need to consume their deliverables and to into our solutions. So they, they were uh, integrated uh, into our system as suppliers at a large solution train level. So that really went well. And we have a high degree of uh, reusable components within our large solution, meaning uh, a component which is which is uh, part of one large solution need to be will be consumed by other large solution. So that is a challenge in uh, you know uh, in planning and cadence. So that for that we still have that challenge. Uh, we, are, we don't have a right solution. We are experiment, experimenting with in four days. So hopefully we'll uh, find out a way to how to do that seamlessly. And then uh, establishing a uniform approach and cadence across the large solution trains. Uh, since these solution trains are operating as you know silo solution trains, uh, you know having a similar cadence, uh, the PA cadence would help in consuming the reusable components across the large solution train. So that is not at play, not at in place right now. So the cadence of the large solution trains are not aligned. So that is what we wanted to uh, you know, accomplish going forward. And the last one, full up, full engagement top down, uh, meaning uh, our, as I, as I mentioned, our organization is uh, global, globally spread. Uh, the leadership as well as the product management is spread, you know, multiple locations, even in US, they are spread over in 10 to 12 uh, locations. Uh, so training them in a face to face training is a very challenging thing right so because of that we couldn't train the leadership and the product management group uh, when we started off uh, so that that became a challenge because they were not aligned to uh, the safe adoption so what we are planning to do is we, we have internal summits uh, you know often once in six months once in a year uh, so we we have now planned the trainings around those summits so that you these leadership and product management folks come and gather in those summits. So we just before the summit or after the summit, we, will, we are planning to uh, do that, uh, those trainings so to, to get them aligned. Actually, we did one training in uh, February in, like that, in a summit, after the summit. So some of the results uh, I would like to uh, highlight here. Uh, so I'll start from top right. Uh, time to market, 50% uh, faster time to market. Uh, earlier, our releases were uh, at least six months, six months to nine months. So that was the frequency of the releases. Uh, now we have brought that down to three month releases. So that's why it's 50% improvement. Okay, and then uh, quality, we are seeing a 20% uh, reduction. Uh, in uh, defects, incoming defects, and then predictable quarterly, quarterly releases. Earlier, the releases were not predictable. Okay, every six months, once they used to be, get delayed by a few weeks to a month or a, a, a ninety-day period, depending upon uh, the situation. So now, every large solution uh, we are doing quarterly releases. Every large solution we are doing a quarterly release. So predictable releases and. Uh, Program planning and execution on cadence. We are doing uh, planning and execution on cadence. Okay, so that is an improvement that uh, we have seen. So all this transformation that I shared with you. So this is happening in conjunction with uh, we are doing a portfolio modernization, the architectural change in the in the product set. So we are containerizing. Uh, all the products uh, from Docker and uh, Kubernetes. Okay, so there are multiple transformations in play at this point in time. Okay, so going forward, I'll quickly wrap it up. Uh, so we have two more uh, agile release trends which will launch, and the continued improvement we want to do using the Kanban uh, flow at various levels. Safe trainings we want to reach to 90% of trained workforce by mid uh, this year, uh, focus on role-based training, uh, that is another thing. And other, other important point I would like to highlight is, uh, we have currently have uh, traditional roles in the system, uh, we want to introduce agile roles. 
scrum master po our team uh, so those roles by the by october this year and uh, additional communities of practice we want to start and consistently doing problem solving workshops uh, chris talked about problem solving workshops so we wanted to adopt a consistent way of doing those thank you chris if i could yeah that was great thank, thank you for that please right one minute just to finish off if you're interested in uh, getting more knowledge we do have a uh, huge amount of material that's freely available on the framework site uh, there's training courses uh, to, to get you started and uh, the three of us Ranjal and Surya will be at the uh, booth uh, right after this event and then tonight we're also after everything finishes we're also over at the uh, blue bar we'll have some drinks and uh, food if you'd like to come and talk we'll be networking with a lot of the uh, safe community here in Bangalore. So thanks very much for your attention. Really appreciate it. Thank you.